Tain Takaraya, Daka Bahuba, or Huda Waribo Kazike. My name is Joseph Riverwind. I'm of the Northern Arawak Tribal Nation. Uh, I'm the war chief of my tribe, uh, and I'm also of Sephardic Jewish heritage as well. And uh, this is my lovely wife. I, um, Arlen Riverwind, um, and um, my name is. Larlin Riverwind, and um, I am a descendant of the Eastern Band Cherokee Indians and the Muscogee Creek. I'm also Celtic on my mom's side, and um, I'm a doctor of naturopathy and a master herbalist. And first and foremost, we are servants of the Most High Elohim, yes. our chief cornerstone, Yeshua. Uh, the, the scripture says, Yeshua said, my sheep know my voice. Uh, the fact that you guys are going through and really making large amounts of uh, people to come to Yeshua and, and to the Torah in your communities tells me right now that the that these are the sheep because we know that there's an awakening happening right now in in America mm -hmm. in, in general and all over the world really but um, at, you know as we know it right now here in America we know that there's a huge awakening happening people are coming straight into this thing full steam uh, because they they're starting to find out who they are and this is whether no matter what race or whatever you want to want to go with and I, and I do believe that the Indians um, probably uh, they're, they're very well could be literally Jews a gad I know that there's several different theories on that um, because we know in Revelation it talks about people that say they're Jews and are not um, yes, right. Revelation 2 verse 1 Right, and so there's a very strong possibility in my mind that that uh, Native Americans, at least some of the tribes, could literally be uh, Jews and not just uh, one of the tribes of Israel. But uh, that's you know that's we'll talk about that in a second. But the idea that there's so many people running to Yeshua and running to His Word and running back to the original church uh, tells me that there's something to all this, and 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 not just. Um, not just in the in Native Americans, but in the everybody that's coming to it. Because uh, I, I just watched a video, and this is this is interesting. They were doing DNA tests on a group of people. There was probably fifty people in the room. They were doing DNA tests on all these people. Um, there was one individual that stands out to me. That was uh, he looked Native Native American, one hundred percent. In his DNA, they found almost every nation in the world in his DNA, uh, which goes with my theory of the idea that the original man had every nation DNA in his blood at that time and that's how we get so many different variations because all of it was in that original DNA so I believe that there's a very good opportunity since Israel was scattered amidst the entire world that um, there's not very many pure blood people that can trace their lineage back to a single person same exact uh, person throughout the, the throughout the time other than like the uh, elites or something and most people have a very huge variety of mixture there's a very good chance in my opinion that the Israelite blood has touched so many people uh, because of in you know mixing mixed breeding and all that stuff it's so interesting the way it's all taken but it, there's a clear there's a clear thing here like the people that are in for this and the people that are into it the people that are coming to the Messiah are finding out they're Israel you don't see you don't have to talk them into it you know like where whereas in modern day churches you have to like philosophize you have to you have to come to them and, and give them a real good argument and talk them into this and all that with this it's not like that you hear the voice you realize who you are then boom you run to it and that's what one of the greatest proofs i see in the native american reservations talk a little bit about what's going on with that because when you go and present this to your brothers and your sisters how is it being received well i'll, I'll tell you um Actually, I'll tell you a story of something that took place with some of our elders. When a little over 10 years ago, they went to Israel and they went to the Knesset, they went there to protocol. Uh, this was a delegation of First Nations chiefs, spiritual leaders and elders. And, um, and, you, and, and again, like I said, it wasn't all the tribes that were monotheistic. Uh, there were tribes that were polytheistic and worshipped all sorts of different gods. Uh, we were just speaking for you know the tribes that even my people uh, after the centuries ended up uh, worshiping other gods and elements and things. But in the ancient times, we were strictly just believers in one God. Um, but this uh, this delegation went to Israel and received permission to to go to the wall and, and to be there uh, on on behalf of Chief Cornerstone Yeshua. 
And so they went down to the wall and they had their drums and our elders were, were dressed in their traditional regalia. And they started to sing traditional songs. These are native songs that have been passed down for generations. Well, immediately the Hasidic Jews, the Orthodox Jews, um, some of the other, they, they came and telling them, stop, stop singing, stop singing right now. And our elders were saying, why? You, and, and in our tradition, you can't stop a song. So even if you're singing, you can't just stop the song until it's finished. So the people kept singing and they said, you're singing in high Hebrew. Who taught you our songs? And the elders said, these songs have been passed down for generations. And then they said, you're singing the name of our most high Elohim. You must stop. And and again, the, chief, the chiefs and elders said, this is what we've always called him. This is how we preserve his name in our songs. And so you know what happened? All of many of these, uh, the Jewish people that were there at the wall, the Hasidics, the Orthodox, they came and at the invitation of the native people came to the drum and started singing with the elders and the spiritual leaders. And they were singing his name out loud. Tell them what, um, the, what the Cheyenne call themselves. Yeah, so the Cheyenne tribe, uh, you know, and of course Cheyenne, Cherokee, these are all modern uh, names for, for their tribes. The traditional name of the Cheyenne was, was and is Tsitsitsa, which means the people of the fringes. Whoa. That's <laughs> cool. That is seriously cool. Yeah. yeah and we haven't even gotten into like the star people stories and the giant tribes and all. There's just so much. <laughs> so next question. Next question, brother. Okay. TCs, man, that's that's cool. That gave me pumps. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at my TCs. That's, that's, okay. Uh, Joanna asks, what is the relationship between the pipe and the Torah? If I'm, do, you, do you understand what I'm... Okay. Well, no, I, I, I understand. So I can't go too much into into pipe ceremony itself. Joseph but, is a pipe carrier. But the, what the pipe was... What, okay, let's, let's first of all talk about what's not in the pipe. All right, so the only thing that went into a ceremonial pipe was pure tobacco that had been blessed. And and that was only used for prayer. The reason being that, one, the tobacco was, was never inhaled into the lungs because uh, it was considered sacred. And when you prayed, the smoke itself was a physical symbolic reminder of your prayers going up to the Creator. And what does it say in Scripture that the prayers of the saints go up as incense, go up as smoke before the throne of God? So what the pipe is it tells us the story of the gospel even within the pipe not only because of the ruach and the breath that's used for prayer but the pipe stem is made of red stone red pipe stone which represents the earth and you've got the wood that's staked into the earth and it's an instrument used for for prayer uh in the same manner that there was incenses in the torah that that yahweh said do not use this for yourself or the punishment is death we find that the same thing with the tobacco use uh, in the ceremonial pipes. You know, if it's used for the wrong reason, the tobacco, emphysema, cancer, death, every, I mean, all the curses that, that are applied to it. But we've known pipe carriers, elders in their 70s, 80s years old, that have nothing wrong with them because they've only used that for the purity that Creator told people to use it for. Uh, now, of course, we can't use frankincense, myrrh, and all these things because we just simply don't have those types of herbs or incenses in the Americas here. So that's what the Creator gave our people to use. Yeah, because it says in Malachi 1.11, I believe, that the nations of the earth will offer up sweet incense in His name. And uh, Joseph, tell them about the, the word intercede. So the word intercede uh, comes from the Hebrew word pagah. And, uh, and at its root, the word pagah literally means to pray with smoke. So if you've been interceding, yeah, that's praying with smoke. It's it's a spiritual and it could be a physical. So what we saw in in uh, the temple and in the tabernacle, that altar of incense was not just made to be a, a sweet smelling fragrance before the Lord. You know, it's not just him putting his blade plug in into the wall. <laughs> it was meant for for uh, you know what does it say in scripture that the the prayers of the saints rise up as smoke. And so um, we, though, it's interesting that the concept of praying with smoke has been um, forgotten largely in 
the believer's circles today. But Native people, we've always known that that Creator enjoys the sweet smelling fragrance of certain incenses mm -hmm. and that our prayers are equated like that when we're praying from a, a place of righteousness because of our faith in Yeshua or when we're praying um, out of a pure heart and a, a hunger after Creator and a closeness with Him. Mm -hmm. And so when we offer up that incense and our prayers are lifted up with that, both are a sweet smelling sacrifice to Him.